Farmers in Bundibujo district, western Uganda, have recorded a decrease in cocoa exports in the recent month. One of the major challenges for cocoa growers in Bundibujo is uh, the price for their cocoa and also its quality and then uh, facilities to make, to make that quality. On the other hand, seasonal floods due to heavy rainfall have threatened food security. Most of our, our, far, our farms were washed away. Most of the food we, we had cultivated, it was also washed away. So that is the situation we are in. And uh, what, what is next is to keep on starving and to import food from other districts like Fort Potro and maybe Chegegua. The recent effects of COVID-19 have also further amplified the farmers' plight. The COVID-19 has affected us mostly the women, whereby we, we use it to go to, to the markets to do some businesses. But since we are locked down, we, could, we couldn't move. So, and then our children are now suffering because we've been lacking food. Even, even some home equipments we are also missing. Some of us, even our, some of the husbands have, have left their families because of their responsibilities. They are not working, they are not getting support. It is not different in Greater Masaka District, where the COVID-19 lockdown measures destabilized market prices and capital liquidity for farmers. They were affected by, by price fluctuations. For example, a case in point is um, for, for the eggs. A trouble eggs um, in around uh, April went from uh, 10,000 or 9,000 to 4,500 in the region. region because uh, they were not allowing uh, um, sale, sale of eggs to the external markets. Other items, like for example, passion fruits also, is suck. Went to, went to 20,000, a sack of passion fruits, and uh, a ply of tomatoes went from 250,000 to about 60,000. So they, they have been heavily affected by the prices, but we had a, a lot of, um, the, there was a lot of abundance of food, especially for bananas, because the, a bunch of banana went to around 5,000, 6,000. So the households were facing, they, don't, they, they never had food crisis, or they never had, or we never had, uh, we had the food in plenty during the period. But the prices of the rich produce were low. Even for, 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 coffee, for coffee, the prices went low. From, uh, for example, Kasei went from 4,500 to 4,000 up to like 3,800 UGX. In Kamuli district, farmers under Buzaya Growers Cooperative Union rushed to sell their coffee amidst the sudden lockdowns. Uh, we were just in the middle of the buying season. As a union, we advance money to farmers, we advance money to cooperative societies. But since the lockdown was something abrupt, farmers, whom we had given the money, by the time we, they, we came to some relief, they had sold the coffee to the middlemen and they couldn't repay the balance. We are just waiting for maybe for the next uh, harvest season, then we collect we the coffee from them. And of course that means that the capital the union uses has been now put to redundancy because it's with the farmers, yet we are working with a very small working capital. This is what prompted Rubble Foundation, an agribusiness development center, to provide relief to these communities amidst challenging times. We came to realize that most of our farmers are being faced by the pandemic and then too the floods have washed down most of their food crops and they are having a, 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 a hunger problem. So we've worked with the cooperative to identify most vulnerable farmers who don't have food to support them and give them some food relief for some period until they recover. And this is the same for Kamuli and Masaka districts. Mm-hmm.